I'd like to start uh, by welcoming you all to Parliament today. Um, I know that many of you have spent a long time in the queue to get here, but let me say that this is uh, your Parliament and that we do like uh, to welcome uh, not only stakeholders such as yourself, but particularly the debate that we're going to engage in today. And I also would particularly like to thank the Ford Foundation and SPRU at Sussex University for hosting and sponsoring today's event. And let me extend a special welcome to Johan Schott, who is the new director of SPRU. Now, um, here we in Parliament, we have many discussions on finance and investment, but not nearly enough which have social equity at their heart which is why it really is a true pleasure to welcome you here today. And there couldn't be a better time to have this conference. As a scandal engulfs um, the cooperative party, the cooperative bank rather, <laughs> not the party, sorry, the, the, the government smears are getting to me. Um, there has a scandal engulfs the co cooperative bank, which prided itself on its ethics, and that scandal is being used to taint the entire cooperative and mutualist movement, as well as the Labour Party, it's more important than ever that we reform finance in the interests of innovation and social justice. So my name's Chion Wara. I'm the Shadow Cabinet Minister responsible for social enterprise, digital government and cyber security. And if you can think of the link between those three, <laughs> I'll promise you tea. Um, but prior to, being, prior to joining the Cabinet Office, I was the Shadow Minister for Science, Innovation and Digital Infrastructure. And prior to that, indeed prior to entering Parliament in 2010, I was a telecoms engineer for 20 years, designing new and innovative pro <coughs> networks, products. <laughs> I know it's going to be a bit of noise, but I'll just speak louder. Um, designing new and innovative networks, products and services all around the world. And given that I joined the Labour Party when I was 16, but I decided that I wanted to be a scientist when I was seven, I think it's fair to say that innovation and social inclusion have been an important part of my life for as far back as I can remember. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't mean I'm in a position to answer any of the very important questions you're posing this afternoon. After all, if I was, there wouldn't be very much point in you guys being here. But I am fully aware of the importance of nurturing finance for both innovation and social inclusion. And I also know that my colleagues in both the Shadow Biz Department and the Shadow Treasury team are fully aware of the challenges that we face. The challenges faced by creative and innovative businesses and social enterprises across the country. And I'll just speak a little bit about that to set the context of why it's so important to have this debate today before handing over to the real experts in these areas. So we've recently witnessed one of the biggest crises in capitalism that the world has ever seen and to bring it home, it is something that my constituents are still dealing with on a day-by-day -day basis, particularly the cost of living crisis that's resulted. For them, prices have risen faster than pay for 40 of the 41 months that this government has been in office, whilst executive pay continues to steam ahead, rewarding failure rather than success for all. This weekend, we heard allegations that the Royal Bank of Scotland has been driving firms to collapse so it could buy up the assets cheaply. The ca Chancellor says he was shocked by this behaviour. If he listened more to small businesses and innovative businesses, he'd know that the financial system has not been working for a long time. And indeed, this recovery, which is the slowest for 100 years, is not one which is working for all. This is not an economy that works for all, and it's not a recovery that works for all. So we're now at a point where private, public, and third sectors have been tried and tested 
yet none have proved to be the answer, I would say. These sectors have expanded and contracted due to particular failings of the other over time, and also the flow of finance. Now, in the labor movement, we fought over decades, over, I would say, a century and a half, for essential social goods, such as schooling and healthcare, not to be dependent on individual benevolence, charity, or private sector provision. Until in the 20th century, an objective state was increasingly seen as the best way to ensure the provision of these social goods. Over that time, the proportion of the state, of the, the size of the state as a proportion of GDP rose from 14 to 43%. So the 20th century saw the rise of a centralized, meritocratic, but also technocratic state entities where the individual was sidestepped and individual benevolence not trusted. Then, I would say in the latter part of the 20, 20th century, it was argued that the state was lacking in innovation, that it was costly, remote from the communities it needed to serve, in prey to entrenched vested interests, though different from those acting in the private sector. And this gave rise to renewed interest in the local and social value created by community and social enterprises sending the labour movement back to our roots in cooperatism and mutualism. So what I would say was that it's become clear that no sector on its own can respond to the needs of society. Each has its own strengths and weaknesses and each needs reform and reinvigoration. We must build a private <coughs> sector which is more focused on long-termism and value creation the public sector needs to innovate better and more effectively, cost-effectively extend reach and improve service. And I happen to know that our next speaker has a few well-aired um, thoughts on the entrepreneurial potential of the state. And the third sector must be able to operate in an economy where grant funding is scarcer and accountability more highly prized. So as the Shadow Minister for Social Enterprise, I believe social enterprises are at the cutting, sector, cutting end of all three sectors. Strongly rooted in their communities, enterprising and properly regulated, social enterprises can identify new and more socially effective ways of delivering public services and be, thus being an example to government, but they also have the potential to be the innovative front line of market competition, using it to deliver social value and adapt to a world where increasingly, I hope, there is more emphasis on social value creation and retention in the private sector. But for this to be achieved, they need finance. And here they face the same challenges as small and mid-sized businesses. Now, the Labour Party is sometimes accused of undermining or attacking the financial services industry. But it is precisely because we understand the importance of finance that we seek to strengthen the social value it delivers. So let's be clear, moving figures around on a global screens does not deliver social value. But innovation, be it in products, be it in processes, or be it in social services, does. This can be, deliver real social value and also social inclusion where the rewards are justly shared. <coughs> but the relationship between finance, risk, reward, and value is complex and particularly for social enterprises which often have asset locks, which mean that the balance between debt and equity is of particular concern. And more generally, the best way to nurture innovation as the basis for social progress and, and otherwise is still a matter of debate. And this is why I am particularly glad to see you here. The government is taking some steps forward 
in launching the Social Stock Exchange and Big Society Capital. Social impact bonds may also be effective, but for social enterprises, for small businesses more generally, and indeed for mid-size and large businesses, we need a financial system that works in the long-term interests of all. So now is the time for reform of the financial system. We cannot wait for another crisis. It's at the heart of how our economy works. And if we want to drive innovation in businesses and in our social economy, it must be reformed to nurture social equity and long-term value creation. Thank you very much.